you have found the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video for Tuesday, the 16th day of April here in 2024. We're now into the second half of the month. Will there be a more benign pattern taking shape? Yes, I think so, but we do have one more storm chance to talk about on Wednesday. But today, let's just soak in the numbers. It was our second consecutive absolutely picture-perfect April day. Now we got off to a chilly start this morning. It started at 39 at the airport just before sunrise this morning, but what a diurnal range today. We went from 39 in the morning to 76 in the afternoon, even outdoing our expectations in the temperature department. That's full 15 degrees above the average, but nowhere near a record. Of course, that record 85 set in 2002 in 2014, 18 degrees. Now that is pretty cold for the second half of April. All right, here's the weather map as of this recording a little after 7 o'clock. Our weather, of course, quiet. We had some heavy thunderstorms for a lot of the afternoon down in West Virginia, but the main show is out here with low pressure across the Corn Belt. We've got a lot of turning of the wind with height through the atmosphere, a lot of wind shear, in other words, and tornado watches are out for parts of Iowa, Wisconsin, Missouri, and Illinois. There's been some hail-producing storms out here, and, you know, this is kind of made up a little bit for a little bit of a forecast bust in the plains yesterday yesterday was a day where there could have been a lot of severe weather in the plain states uh, nebraska the dakotas kansas all the way down to texas but even though there was some report there were some reports i should say of hail and damaging winds it wasn't a gangbusters severe weather day but today has definitely been more active now this storm is what is heading our way tomorrow and will be responsible for our severe weather risk late in the day the first thing we'll see is a warm front late tonight and as a result couple of showers will be a possibility as a lot of us head out the door tomorrow morning. This may be the wettest part of the entire daylight hours. In fact, first thing on our Wednesday morning, some showers around. We'll go through a stretch though where while we can't rule out a passing shower or even a thunderstorm, I think from midday through a lot of the afternoon, <clears throat> the amount of dry time will definitely outnumber the uh, minutes worth of wet time, if you will, uh, during that stretch and, and temperatures will get back into the 70s with some sunshine as well. The risk for severe weather will come later in the day, mostly towards the evening hours. And this risk is not exclusive, of course, to eastern Ohio and extreme western Pennsylvania. The level two uh, slight risk of severe weather uh, encompasses parts of lower Michigan, uh, eastern and northern Indiana, <clears throat> and roughly around in north of I-70 in Ohio. And just a reminder of our severe weather threat scale, we like to think of this as a, a one to five scale and we're at a level two right now. The, these products are put out by the Storm Prediction Center, part of the National Weather Service, and I do like their overall ideas as far as the risk categories, including the tornado risk tomorrow. It's probably highest, closest to our area of low pressure. That's where the wind shear will be maximized. In a place like Toledo, Fort Wayne, Detroit, Sandusky, even over to Cleveland. Now, our, our tornado risk is not negligible in eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania. It's just maybe not quite as high as our neighbors off to the west. So it's one of those situations where all hazards will be a threat. And we've said this a lot lately. We've been in a lot of these situations lately where it's a non-zero tornado risk. Anytime we mention the T word, it gets people's attention. And you mention it too many times and people think you're, you know, you're crying wolf. But this is another situation in which there's a lot of wind shear up above our heads and the atmosphere will get pretty unstable tomorrow afternoon. So in addition to the routine hail, and straight line thunderstorm winds, yes, we can't rule out that isolated tornado across far eastern Ohio and into the first tier of counties in the western parts of the Keystone State. And as far as the timing goes in our television viewing area, this is mostly around sunset. So our, our rain and thunderstorm chances will start ramping up around 6 to 7 o'clock, probably peaking around 8 o'clock or so, and then diminishing as we go past the 9 o'clock hour and into the overnight. And if you think it's been busy lately, you're right. And this is all a little ahead of schedule. We're in more of a, a May-like pattern or even a June-like pattern as far as the frequency of thunderstorms and severe weather threats. Yes, typically we start seeing a pretty substantial ramp up in our thunderstorm days from March to April, but a bigger jump comes from April to May. And that continues, of course, into June. And we typically see our most thunderstorm days around our region in the first part of summer, June, and into the first part of July. Once we're into the latter half of July and into August, it becomes a little less frequent to have thunder and lightning and thunderstorms across our part of the country. So again, it can rain at any point on Wednesday, but the rain may be most consistent first thing in the morning. Then the sun comes out, maybe a passing shower, or even a thunderstorm in the afternoon, but a lot of dry time. It's with the arrival of our front right here, right around, again, sunset. Sunset now is about 8.03, 8.04. And that's right around when this line is probably going to be pushing through our part of the region. 
the threat won't last very long in any one location. Everything's going to be moving pretty fast, and this is not going to be a training situation like we had the other night on Sunday night where we had waves of storms kind of running over the same places over and over again, especially in Lawrence and Mercer counties in Pennsylvania. I don't think we'll see a repeat of that tomorrow evening because this will just be kind of one semi-discreet line that just blows through and that'll be the end of the show. And once the storms leave, they're not coming back anytime soon. We'll have a dry day coming up on Thursday. Next system quickly pushes in Friday, and this will just bring us some rain showers at times Friday morning and into the midday. This is a map that makes you think, boy, it's going to get hot right at the end of April. But I don't think locally it's likely to be hot at the end of April, but I do think we'll be consistently above the average, warmer than the average, during the last week of the month. Our averages by this point in the last week of April are up around 63 to 65 or so for daytime highs. And in this kind of pattern, I think we can probably expect some days with at least highs in the upper 60s, lower 70s. And I, I do think that'll be most common towards the very end of the month. This period around April 24th, 25th, it may be still pretty seasonable with highs maybe mostly in the, in the lower 60s. But as we go towards the very end of the month, that's when I think the pattern will really become favorable for sustained mild, if not warm weather. And that probably takes us into early May as well. So lots of spring weather in terms of temperatures on the way, just like we had today. But we got to stay weather aware for one more day coming up on Wednesday. We'll have you covered on air and online. Make sure you're following me everywhere on social media. And I'll see you back here maybe on Wednesday. But if we're covering severe weather Wednesday evening, uh, we'll do a live stream instead of weather for weather geeks. But we'll be back to our usual weather for weather geeks coming up on Thursday.